In my opinion, nothing is more haunting to a strong and independent woman than not having access to a man's money. Permanent alimony is a life sentence just for marrying someone. So crazy some people think that is a fair thing that should exist. Laws like this destroy the family unit and ultimately destroy society. In an era of no-fault divorce and borderline misandry in the family court system, you have to either be keeping it within your faith or completely off your trolley to get hitched. Men must refuse to marry and refuse to have children until the divorce, custody, paternity, alimony and child support laws are changed to protect men's rights. The only way to win is to not play their game. The day after your wife figures out you're worth more out of the house than in it, you are done for. She keeps the house, she keeps the car you paid for, and you pay her monthly to not be your wife. Truth be told, alimony made sense decades ago when most married women were housewives who worked hard helping raise their children, no daycare, and keep the home. Budget planning, gardening, food preservation, cooking all the meals, cleaning house, sewing the family's clothes, running the PTA, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, planning and managing the family's activities and vacations. And most marriages lasted 30 plus years. No second car, not paying for daycare, rarely eating out and rarely buying clothes make a big difference in the family being able to save money. And divorces were more difficult to get. Now, it's a totally different world. So many changes need to be made in family court laws. Retired process server, and I've seen some stuff in my time. The best idea I've read about in the past few years is for families with children. If a marriage just can't be saved, then both parents must work to provide a home that the children live in. Each parent will live with the children in the home for two weeks, then switch off with the other parent to care for the kids for the next two weeks. Meanwhile, the adults must find somewhere to reside in their two weeks off. Kids are raised in a safe environment and both parents are responsible for it. No child support to one parent or the other. The court will require both to support the kids and themselves. I've lost count of the number of guys that I've known that spent decades working excessive overtime, putting off retirement for years or even dropping dead while still working because of sky-high alimony. Also, senior social services biggest clients are women who never planned what to do when their ex dies and are suddenly thrust into poverty because the alimony stopped. I think the real reason why this type of anti-alimony bill is finally being passed is not because lawmakers have finally come to the realization that this is injustice and unfair to men. No, that has nothing to do with it. Instead, it is a bill that is being passed to actually protect women from having to pay unfair alimony, from having to pay just like men have had to pay for 200 plus years in the US. More and more women have benefited from all the privileges they have been given, like affirmative action laws for women, grants for women, scholarships for women, business loans for women, hiring and promotions for women, etc., etc. All these privileges that women get, that men have never received at all, all these privileges have now produced women with much higher levels of wealth, wealth they never truly earned in a fair, equal way. Now that women have gained this unfair wealth, they are maneuvering to protect it from being taken away by those very same alimony laws they benefited from. They do not want to suffer the same injustice because that would be equal treatment. And we all know they don't really want equality in the classic definition. They only want the part of the equality that benefits them, but not any of the parts that would not benefit them. Especially the ones that come at an expense such as working or being employed. So they want this anti-alimony law passed now. How convenient of them. If the law would allow these women to openly discriminate, then of course they would have wanted a law that specifically excluded men from this law, which would mean women don't pay permanent alimony, but the men do. We all know that if they could, they would. But since they can't, well then they are forced to demand this for all, so that they are assured to be covered under the protection from alimony, and begrudgingly have to accept that men will have to be included too. Women are two-faced hypocrites at all levels. Interestingly, I recently came to know that Florida has a group called the Second Wives Club, that's made up of women who are married to previously divorced men, and whose lives suffer because of their husband's exes. These women report that many times their own children's lives are ruined because daddy's money is going to a woman who left long ago, as well as the ex-wives going back to court to request an alimony increase due to the second wife working and adding to the husband's overall household income. So the second wives are now working to pay for some other woman's Caribbean trips as well. Alimony doesn't just destroy the old family, it devastates the new one as well. That's the reality we live in today.
The truth is that alimony is a silly thing to even have in this day and age. I could understand when the woman took care of the household, but it's no longer solely her responsibility in today's world. Many women prey on men for alimony these days, and honestly it is not the man's responsibility to continue funding your lifestyle because you want to leave. Go get a job like the rest of us. And yet people continue to sit around today and wonder why more and more men refuse to get married. Too many women file for divorce knowing they will be able to take their ex-husbands to the cleaners for life. Oftentimes this is far and above the primary motive when a woman files for divorce. Marriage is the only contract where it favors one of the parties. The woman entering the contract and violating the terms of the contract. And you know what? Alimony itself has pretty shaky grounds as a philosophical concept but I can understand it for someone who is a stay-at-home mom for decades and doesn't have the means to support themselves in the event of a divorce. It should be awarded far less often than it is, though, and should be pretty limited to allowing a woman to get back on their feet and find some way to support themselves. The idea that you should be able to take half of the assets from a relationship and then enslave your ex-spouse to you for decades of their lives is completely unfair and immoral by any standard. You shouldn't be able to benefit from somebody for so long when you're no longer benefiting them in any way. The alimony system throughout the U.S. is broken. I understand the system was created in the 70s when women were rarely receiving equal opportunities in the workplace and to remedy divorced women being thrown into poverty. Over time it morphed into a system that guaranteed men would be forced into financial hardship and encouraged women to divorce. It's amazing how situations like these always set up a double-edged sword where once the entitlement is put in place, it is virtually impossible to get rid of it. And when they do, all the rats on the sinking ship go running like crazy. And yet women wonder why men don't want to get married anymore. The mindset women have today is beyond sad. They want alimony for life because it's easier than getting a scale on getting a job and taking care of yourself. Ironically, I have seen so many videos where women who are making more than men have to pay alimony for life, and they scream and yell about alimony for life thinking that it's unfair. What about all of the men financially ruined after alimony and child support who work as slaves for the women who divorced them? If my girl ever tried to do this to me I'd quit my job, sell everything I own and buy a piece of land somewhere, and live off the land and work under the table in a cave in the mountains. Imagine that, taking away a lifetime financial incentive for women to divorce is somehow seen as discrimination against them. Divorce should have never been incentivized. Perhaps if there were no financial incentives, it would encourage people to take more responsibility in their lives by selecting better partners. Alimony never made sense to me anyway. As a partner in a traditional marriage, a man might work to make money which he then shares with his wife, who might not work but instead works in the home, cleaning, cooking, etc. This is on top of other marriage benefits the man gets from the woman like intimacy. Once they are divorced, the woman is no longer providing any of those services to the man which facilitates him working outside the home. He has to wash his own clothes, make his own food, jerk off with his own hand, etc. What is the justification for her to continue to get any share of the money when she is doing nothing to help earn the money, even as a support role for the man? What would happen if the man called into his work and said, I'm not going to come to work ever again, but I expect you to keep paying me, if anything, what a state needs to do is require a mandatory two-hour counseling session with a state representative who won't be influenced by personal religious ideologies whenever people apply for a marriage license. During the two hours they can go over things like, we all want this marriage to work but what if it doesn't? Over 50% of marriages end in divorce. Are you sure what you know you are getting into legally speaking if this happens? Then they can go over some examples of how it can go wrong, custody battles, alimony nightmares, etc. Then they should offer the couple additional legal documents that they can use if they choose to.